Okay, so I'm going to make an attempt to get organized here, and in doing so I realized I have three different kinds of specialized bits for wood. Let's see if I can show you these. The first set here is the, uh, the spade bit. Let me step behind the camera. This is sort of, that's better. The spade bit, here's a one inch spade bit. These are inexpensive. And uh, you can see I've got a set of them and they've been rattling around in my, in my tool box for a long time. And I spend so much time with trying to find a tool and um, what happens? You spend all this time trying to find a tool Instead of drilling a hole, you're walking around, even if you keep them in the same place, you're hunting around for them and they're getting banged up. So I'm going to do what Tubal Cain did years and years and years ago. I'm going to make, take this 2 by 4 chop it up and drill some holes in it and organize all of these bits. So the first set are these spade bits and these are kind of the first wood boring bits. They're made for wood boring. You can see they're flat and um, they're sharpened like right up here. I've probably sharpened these a few times. This is one, one inch. And this is like a really crude way to bore a hole in wood. Very effective, very crude. You know, you would use this to drill a hole for plumbing inside of a wall. Uh, really any place where you don't, you're not gonna look at the results because the, uh, the hole is going to be pretty torn up. The edges aren't going to be super clean. They're going to be okay, especially if you drill part of the way this way and then before you go completely through, you find the little tip as it comes out and you go the other way. Um, another way to do it is to put a backer, a block. But anyway, here's the one inch. The next set that I have is pretty interesting. This is the amazing Brad point bit. This is shaped and built more like a, a metal cutting bit, but you'll notice it has a tiny little tip there, a Brad point, and the cutters, the, the very edge of the bit, see how close I can focus, ah, there, that cuts the wood and it cuts it really nicely. These also, you know, I couldn't put these in a drill doctor sharpener. I have one. I have a drill, doc, drill <laughs> doctor sharpener, and the problem with it is um, I, for, I only use it once every few months, and I forget how to use it. So, But this wouldn't be sharpenable in a drill doctor. You'd have to sharpen this by hand. But the idea behind this is they're, they're very precise, and just the very edge cuts a very nice hole. I'll probably use one of these to make the holes in that 2x4 down there. The last set that I have is the amazing Forstner bit. These may go by another name too. These are the most expensive. They not only cut, they not only cut out here on this edge right here, they also shear away here. I've never sharpened these. I don't use them very much. It's probably time to sharpen them. These are expensive. I mean, this could be, I could have paid $20 for this one bit. And um, I would buy them one at a time as I needed them. I wouldn't buy them um, in a set. I think Harbor Freight sells a reasonable set. I'm not sure. But uh, I just bought them one at a time. This is inch and three eighths. So this bit, and I believe this bit, these two bits <coughs> will cut the same size hole. But this one will do a wonderful job, a uh, really smooth job. This will do a quick and effective job. I've shortened it here for some reason. I'm, I'm not sure why. It used to probably be longer, but I've shortened it for some reason. Okay. So, here we go. I've got a two by four. And uh, I'm gonna leave myself a little room on the end here. 
so that um, in case I get a bigger bit or a smaller bit, I can add some holes. I can also add some holes behind it for duplicates. Here I have a, a 5 eighths and here I have a 5 eighths. So I'll probably drill an extra hole and put it behind there. Or if I get, if I get a, something in between, in between 5 eighths and 3 quarters would be 11 sixteenths and I can put a hole back here. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is cut this off with the uh, chop saw. Okay, now the question is, how big should the hole be? This looks like a quarter inch would be really good because the bit, these are hex, the shanks are hex. It's interesting. Let's see if I can show you that. It's kind of a hexagonal shape here. So to get it, I rotate it and it goes two, four, three just a few thousandths shy of a quarter of an inch. So let's see if my one of my Brad point bits is a quarter. There's two, four, five. I'm going to try this bit. I'm going to test it before I uh, go ahead and do this. That seems just fine. All right, so we'll go ahead and drill those. I'm going to do this on the drill press. Protata. I'm going to do this on the drill press because I don't want them to go in and then be crooked. And also, I want to set a stop so I don't drill through. I did on a lot of my tools I bought these LED lights that are made for sewing machines these are great I think they're like 12 15 dollars a piece and um, I just put them I bought you know six of them and just put them everywhere okay Point this up so lock this you're supposed to lock the column so that the stress doesn't end up on the rack over here the toothed rack i probably have not done that as much as i should okay i'm going to rotate this guy down that's a plenty deep hole for that and it won't go any farther very slowly so that you don't get this tear out here it's no big deal really on a on a something that's just going to hold tools but if you go slow when you start you get less tear out than you do if you just go at it like i did here i started to think you know what let me slow down as i'm just entering and i won't get the tear out that i would normally get and that works well with brad points Okay, somewhere up here in the tool bit drawer, I have a countersink. Another tool which I should. Put in a holder. There's the countersink there. Um, 
it, they have several types, and these should go in their own. I should make a holder for these specialty tools that I have, countersinks and other drills. So, three-eighths, another three-eighths. What is that? Nine sixteenths, five eighths, that one's kind of stiff, five eighths, five eighths, that one's stiff also, that's interesting. Three quarter, a backup three quarter. 13, 16, 7, 8, 1, inch and an 8, and the incredible inch and 3 8. That's not bad. This 5 8 does not want to fit in that hole. That's interesting. Let's see what's going on here. Ha! Ah, this is. 0.275, so this is a special size. Hmm. I'll have to find a special bit for that hole. That's too big. Let's see, that's the backup 5.8. This looks like it came from a different set altogether. I gotta figure out a place to put it. We spend so much time in the shop trying to find things, trying to find parts, trying to find raw materials, trying to find tools. And um, even though I had these in a drawer, 13 sixteenths, seven, eight, even though I had these in a drawer all in one place, they really weren't all in one place. And there were other things piled around them and they were turned in for end. And I would spend five minutes trying to find the right size drill bit, which is kind of silly. It shouldn't really take you more than 10 seconds to lay your hand on the right tool, inch and an eight, inch and a quarter. Oh, I forgot the other one. There's one more. There's one that goes right here. And that's the inch and three eighths. Put that in. Let's see, let me get the spacing. Inch and a quarter. Put it right about there. Oh, not working. Wrong pen. There. Get our pen back, inch and three eighths. So this should help me be able to put my hand on what I need better than before. Of course, they bang together a little bit, but that's okay. That's way better than what it was before. Inch and an eighth. Very, 
Very nice. I suppose I should wire wheel them, oil them, sharpen them, and put them away. <laughs> and you know, maybe I will. Anyway, okay, on to the next one. I'm gonna cut this off here. This is my practice end. So I'm just gonna cut it off like here. Which is no big deal. Now we have these. These are the Brad point Brad pointers. Do do do. Maybe I have two that are the same. I'll have to do some measuring. We get them all in order. And of course, the important one is the one I actually use to drill the other holes. Okay. These are all going to have to be drilled with their individual. <laughs> I'm going to use this to drill the hole for this and this, this. But when they get down here, you can see they're bigger. So I probably use this bit to drill the hole for these two. But what would my what should my spacing be? Hmm. I think something like this. You want to have enough room to write, and you want to have enough room to be able to get a bit. You don't want them jammed together. Something like this, I think. That's pretty good. Let's go. Let's go a little wider. As for depth, I think I'm going to use the old tape measure. Tape measure, tape method. Something like this. Like that. Yeah, it's alright. got a nice bend in it. You see the tip, how it's going wackety wackety? I should try to straighten that if I can. Okay. have to sit there so that you know when you need it you go oh there's the quarter inch there's the quarter inch there's the three sixteenths that's a lot better than rat you know pulling open drawers for five minutes and rattling around oh guess what this is not a Brad point bit. <laughs> this just happened to be there. So the next one is where? Is it this one? Probably.
Let's see what we've got here. This should be better than what we had before. Let's see. Oh, this goes here. This goes here. This goes here. And there's my brad points. Now I gotta figure out what they are. Because these aren't marked in quarter sizes. This is let's see. Oh. 0 0.191 192. To figure out what that is. 0.191 um, this should be quarter. Yeah, this is 2445. It's five thousandths under a quarter, but that's still a quarter. Three oh eight, three oh nine. Bigger pen for this. Can't really see what I'm doing. That's better. Three seven five is three eighths. That I know off the top of my head. May use this sharpie on this one. This one here, I can't, well, I can measure the shank. <coughs> Four, three, three. That's four, nine, six, that's half. So we got quarter. We have three to figure out. We have 0 0.191, 308, and 433. Let's do a little quackalating. Uh, 7 divided by 16 is. That's probably it. This is 7 16. So that's 4375. So that's within two and a half, three thousandths, three and a half thousandths. Four three three. So this is seven sixteenths. What else we got here? Uh, three oh eight. Three eighths. Five sixteenths. I'm betting five sixteenths. Five divided by sixteen is three one two five. That's probably what that is. That's a little off, but it's got to be five sixteenths. It couldn't be. It could be. Couldn't be eleven thirty seconds. Why would I have an eleven? Yeah, see, that's way too big. So ten, ten thirty seconds, nine thirty seconds. Yeah, that's not it. The closest one is. The closest one is five divided by sixteen, gives us three one two five, which is only a few thousands, four thousands under three oh eight. Uh, that's going to be 5, 16. Last one, 0.191, 3 divided by 16s. 1875, that's got to be at 3 sixteenths, because I was getting 0 0.191. 4 sixteenths is a quarter. 7 divided by 32 is... Too big, 218. 3 divided by 16 is 0.1875. Let's see how close we can get this to, to read to that. 1875. This, is, this seems a little bigger. This is 1, I'm getting uh, 190. Oh, let's see if it's zeroed. No, it's zeroed. And I'm getting, uh, I'm going to call that 3 sixteenths because that's, Two or three thousandths larger.
better, better. Now I gotta go cut the ends off. So here's all the Forstner bits that I own. And I think these two are the same size, which is fine. I'll put them both on this. Let's see. This one is, should be 1375. One, three, one, three, seven, two. A few thousands under inch and three eighths. 1373. Yeah, these are the same size. These are both inch and three eighths, which is fine. But let's, um, I'm going to leave room on both ends of this. These all, I think, have three eighths holes in them. Let's see. 375, 373, 373. Yeah, I'm going to keep going on this. Three seven four, three seven. This is pretty. I've used this one a lot. You can tell by how scored the edge is. Some nibs on here I should file off too. Three seven. All right. So what I need? Oh my God! Look at this. I need to find my three eighths brad point bit. And look, there it is. Why I didn't have to rummage through a drawer for seven minutes and get frustrated. I found it right away. Ha! All right. So. I'm gonna drill these, and um, I could go over to the drill press, but I've had good luck not going to the drill press on this one, so maybe I won't. Okay, la la la. I'll probably cut it here. Put a little mark there, it could be a bird's mouth, but I didn't make one. All right, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put these two, should I put these two behind each other and put them all up here? Hmm. Could do this. I would have nowhere to write the thing. I think I'll just make an extra hole out here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That's fine. So I have extra 3 8 holes. Who cares? The answer? Not me. Okay, let's go down the middle. I could do it this way. Ooh, this is an idea. Inch and a half. And no, no, not inch and a half. Inch and three quarters is half of three and a half. There we go. So that's pretty good. I gotta go a little farther. Nice. Once again, I have to do this thing. This is probably, I don't know, three quarters? Yeah, this is three quarters. This is seven, five, oh. Got no problem there. Three quarter. I'm guessing this is one inch. Sure is. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. It says 0.9985, so that's one. I'm just gonna write and do this one. What is this? Inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth. I'm gonna go by the. See, this this looks very nice. This almost no. I this might yeah. This is a this is very cool. I should show you this one. This one 
is a uh, carbide insert. I don't know if you can, uh, there you can see right there. This actually has a carbide insert uh, in it. So this, this should, I probably paid $30 for this one. This should last a long time because carbide is so much harder and longer lasting. Well, it's considerably longer and harder lasting than a high speed steel. So this, this piece here and this piece here, in fact, maybe this whole piece is a piece of carbide that has been brazed. So that's a lovely, that's a lovely one. Okay, that goes in. Now the question is, what size is it? I don't know. I probably bought it for a specific job. 1.128. 0.128. This is uh, 1 and 8. Because if we do the math, an eighth would be an eighth would be uh, clear one divided by clear 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 one divided by eight is 0.125 and this is coming at at 1.128 so I'm gonna go one and one eight right there lovely these I believe are both inch and three eight. This should be 1.375, and it is. It's 1.373. 1.373. Okay, so I'll put them down here in case I want to get an inch and a quarter. I'll go one and three eighths. One and three eighths. All these are two by four, so I could make them up again. But now I don't have to search anymore for things. But what I'm going to do is something that I learned from Tom Sachs by way of Casey Neistat. I believe his name is Tom Sachs. He says you should be knolling. Knolling just means straighten up your tools. In fact, he says straighten, always be knolling. So that's it. Uh, pretty simple project. I hope to be posting more of these, more content in the future. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. The subscribe button is right over here. It's red. And uh, there's a little bell that pops up there too also. If you hit that, you'll get notified when I make a new video. And I am going to try to make more. Um, oh, and right now, here's uh, a funny video I'm going to put at the end. And I'll tell you what this is next time. Thanks. Bye.